Okay. What do we uh, we have for hybridization explanation? What do you want to say about that? Something like that. <clears throat> What's the reason behind this? Yeah, so we know. Uh, The reasoning behind carbon making the four bonds. All right, so look at the molecule hexene. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, double bond. Is this what you guys had? Let me guess, you found something that looked like two, three, four, five, six, something yeah, like that? Something like that, yeah. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. And um, how to put this the easiest way? Chemists are lazy. <laughs> so I don't want to write all those hydrogens. Right. And if, right. if you were in the, the next class when we start talking about organic, I'll do that with the carbons and the hydrogens all drawn out one time. And then after that, I'll draw the one below that. So the way this works is these corners and ends are these carbons. What am I not showing? <clears throat> so how do I know how many hydrogens are on each one of those carbons? Okay, that's not good enough. How do I just how do I just kind of know? What is it that I know that lets me kind of know how many hydrogens are there? Carbon makes four bonds. So if carbon makes four bonds, tell me, talk to me about the ones So I know for a fact that this carbon here on the end is singly bonded to that carbon right there. So that's one of its connections, and it's showing nothing else. So everything else has got to be hydrogens. There's just got to be three more hydrogens. So that's the same situation on this one here on the other side, right? But what about um, what about the other? What about the other carbons? What about say this carbon and that carbon? So he's, this one's connected to that carbon once and that carbon once, and this one's that carbon once and that carbon once. So that's two bonds, and it's missing two bonds. So that means it's connected to two hydrogens. So that's what I'm seeing right here, that carbon, and then I'm not seeing those two hydrogens. That carbon, not seeing those two hydrogens. So then tell me about the ones in the middle. It's bonded to three no, it things. Three no, it's got four bonds, but it's bonded to three things. That's the way to say it. But currently it is bonded to three things, so there must be one more bond. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes. From the diagram, what I'm seeing here is this is bonded to this carbon here twice, 
it's bonded to that carbon once. So that's three bonds, and so our fourth bond is my hydrogen. So these blue carbons must have one hydrogen on them. So that's how that's the uh, that's where that comes from. And then when you're drawing these things, at some point it'll be really you just I, you just see it, and then you're like, of course I'm going to draw it like that because who wants to like a million times? What happens when the molecule is a hundred long, or even fifteen long? Nobody wants to do that. Yeah. You'll, you'll do this zig, zigzag line thing, depending on what the formation is. You might remember when we talked about the benzene last time? Maybe we'll put a benzene ring in there. Maybe there'll be a triple bond someplace. Maybe there'll be some other stuff like alcohol groups or acids or something like that hanging off the side. And so we're really only concerned about the fact that interesting things are hanging off of it because carbons and hydrogens are not interesting. They're actually really chemically boring. They only burn and that's pretty much all they do. Uh, not that we don't love that, that that's the case. Uh, okay, so let's go to the question. What was our question? Uh, how many sigma bonds are there? How many sigma bonds we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. Did you count the double bond in the middle? Okay, because there's still a sigma bond there. So there's 16 sigma bonds and... I'm sorry, I just... He said 17 and I said there are 17 sigma bonds there. And then there is one one pi bond. And then the shapes. Now that I can't see any of that. Let's go with the uh, like. What do we got for shapes? Um, this one, this one, this one, and this one. All the black ones, those guys are all tetrahedrals, right? And then this one here, and this one here. You okay with me saying trigonal planar? How do you know that? How'd you know it's tetrahedral? It's connected to four things. So tell me about those two carbons that are the highlighted blue. They're bonded to three things. So three things as far away as they can get is a triangle. So trigonal planar. All right, so draw out the molecular orbital dike. It's connected to this, this guy right here is connected to that carbon, that carbon, and that hydrogen. A molecular orbital diagram for nitrogen. So here's an MOD. And how many electrons am I dealing with for a nitrogen? Seven exterior. It's got um, seven total electrons, right? So how many of those seven electrons are electrons that I can do something with? No. No. Anyone, do I hear five? Five, anyone? Five, five? Five. How come not seven? Whose electron configuration is that? Helium, right? Those electrons are completely and utterly off limits at all times. So <clears throat> that helium, those helium electrons are off limits. So then the nitrogen's got five electrons left to do stuff with. So um, bless you. So here's my S, my 2S down here. So this is a nitrogen atom. And this is the other nitrogen atom, okay? So I've got five electrons to deal with. So I'll go ahead and put two electrons here and one electron there, there, and there. And then two electrons here and one there, there, and there. So I've got my, I basically filled out the second energy level of an energy level diagram for nitrogen. And then I'm gonna add those together. So 
down here at the very bottom, I've got one from each, and then I've got one from each. And then I take these three electrons up here, one from each, and three from the other side, one from each, and one from each, and I've run out of electrons. So then the question is about bond order. So the bond order is telling me how many bonds I'm going to have. So one half times um, bonding, electrons minus antibonding. So we've got uh, one half of, how many bonding electrons do we have? Five. These are bonding electrons. These are bonding electrons. These are and these are. Why is that one the antibonding? So I've got eight bonding. I've got two antibonding. That tells me I'm going to end up with a three here. See this sigma star? What's that mean? Anti. Antibonding. <clears throat> so what we're saying is, the, basically, these two electrons here get canceled out by these two electrons. So no bond gets formed with the two S electrons. But then up top, there are no antibonding electrons because these guys are the antibonding molecular orbitals, and there are no electrons in there. So they're, all the electrons in the 2p are all bonding electrons. What's wrong, Dustin? It's, it, it is, you guys are overthinking it. With the molecular orbital diagrams, you literally look. How many of, the, of these electrons are in an orbital with a star? Uh, total. I have these two right here. You okay with that? That's it. Those two electrons are the only anti-bonding electrons. So that means anybody who doesn't have a star on them, any of these molecular orbital who don't have a star on them are bonding electrons. So I've got these two that are bonding electrons. I've got all six of these that are all bonding electrons. So I've got a total of eight bonding electrons. And then my antibonding, I've just got these two, because that's the only asterisk is right there. That little star is the only one. We started out with 10. Let's back up here. A molecular orbital diagram for nitrogen gas. So it's a molecule. I'm saying that straight away. It's a molecular orbital diagram, and it's nitrogen gas, and nitrogen gas is N2. It's a diatomic. So on the left side, over here, I've got one nitrogen, and over here, I've got one nitrogen. And this is the rest of the electron configuration for that one nitrogen. So the, the uh, nitrogen's electron configuration is... 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. 2p3. Okay? So we're just dealing with these because those are the helium configuration, the last noble gas configuration, so those are off limits. So each of my nitrogens, this nitrogen right here and this nitrogen right here, are using this, these 2s2, um, 2p3. So here's 2s. And then here are my three in my P. And then here are two in my 2S and three in my 2P. So then I just take one and put it there, and one and put it there, and one and put it there, and one and put it there. And then I keep filling from the bottom up, and I never reach any bonding or anti bonding electrons in the 2S. So all six of those electrons on the 2S are bonding. So when you're filling out, you start at the bottom always? Always. Yeah. So remember we were talking about why electrons want to be close to the nucleus? Well, it was the same reason if you're trying to stay on the merry-go-round, where do you put yourself? Close to the center of the merry-go-round. It doesn't take very much energy for you to hold on, even if the thing is going really, really fast, which totally reminds me of a GIF I saw on Reddit like a month ago of some like four guys on a, on a small, like a little kid merry-go-round. It's maybe 10 feet across. 
and they laid a motorcycle on the ground and put the rear tire against the merry-go-round and then cr- mm-hmm. yeah smart is exactly the word i was thinking or not <laughs> Did anyone get-